Rav Cook, Selected Letters, Chapter 2, the topic is Torah versus Other Religions, a preface to Chapter 2, Letter 6. Here Rav Cook explains a phrase of his from the previous letter, all greatness is associated with a parallel deficiency. The soul's powers can achieve great good, but can also be dangerous. Letter 6. By the grace of God, the holy city of Jaffa may be built and established. 9th of Tishrei 5667. This is the 28th of September 1906. Rav Cook begins by saying that it is the eve of Yom Kippur and that he hopes that Mr. Seidel, who has a very good understanding of the author's style, will read his new book, Ekvei Hatson. The explanation of my words, all greatness, is associated with a parallel deficiency that's from the end of letter 5, is simple. The heavens do not grant halves. This is from footnote from Sota 69b. The sages attempted to eliminate sexual desire to prevent immorality, but found that the world could not exist. For in the whole land of Israel a fresh egg was not to be found. So they prayed for half mercy, just to laugh after one's own wife, Rashi. But the heavens do not grant halves. Eroticism exists in its totality, as do all other forces. Back to the text. All strengths are formed in their totality. And this is man's Torah calling, to direct his ways to shape himself so that his total strength is used for good and not for evil. It has already been seen, sorry, it has already been said by the great sages that a phenomenal memory will remind man of all the wisdom and good that he saw, but also of the folly and evil. This is the case with all of the soul's strengths and thus deficiency is an integral part of strength's nature. Consequently, the higher levels of knowledge and finer qualities are associated with commensurate def- deficiencies. Only with man's elevation to the highest level where he sees the divine truth revealed, there evil will not dwell. For ugliness and evil actually exist only to the extent that the divine light is veiled from those who comprehend and those who intuit it. Is. For only when no longer shall you need the sun for light by day, nor the shining of the moon for radiance by night. For the Lord shall be your light everlasting, your God shall be your glory. This is from Isaiah 60.19. And only then, and your people, all of them, righteous, righteous. But this readiness to reach that level where there is no evil requires inner preparation and self-refinement to the point where the energetic will of life itself will be the light of the divine will. The ever-living one, this is from Daniel 12.7, the righteous who makes the world live, souls flying off, flying off him to man. This is from the introduction to the Tikkun Zohar. I'm just going to read, the, uh, read that last sentence again. But this readiness to reach that level where there is no evil requires inner preparation and self-refinement to the point where the energetic will of life itself will be the light of the divine will, the everlasting one, the righteous, who makes the world live, souls flying off him to man. In this state there is no satan and no adversity, and there is no need to repress any human desire, any human strength or desire, for in any case there exists no ideal need for any repression. Stupidity and poverty which are instrumental in buttressing the force of evil, will have no purpose and thus will be neutralized and ephemeral. And for every step that we come closer to God's will in his world, we are elevating life and preparing it more and more towards this goal of good's perfection. And since the world needs nations to act and not individual personalities, therefore we are always uplifting our souls to act as part of the community of Israel, to exalt, elevate and honor her. Everyone must say the world was created for me. This is from Sanhedrin 37a. And when will my deeds reach the level of Abraham's, Isaac's and Jacob's deeds? This is Tana Debai Eliyahu Rabbah 45. Whose soul yearned for the ideal inherent to the community of Israel, even before it came into being. And today, even though we are immersed in the realized aspect of the community of Israel, we are continually moving upward as a whole nation, which is not measured by the worth of particular individuals or generations but by their overall unification, analogous to the great orbit of the solar system as compared to the orbits of single planets. All which is potential is is necessarily associated with some sort of deficiency. 
Who but we, Israel, of all the nations in the world, has such potential in the full realisation of the character of the nation, her name, values, and all her treasures? Thus there are of necessity great deficiencies, but these ultimately are all wondrous virtues at their exalted centre. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen perversity in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the trumpet blast of a king is among them. This is from Numbers 23.32. I was interrupted in in midst of my writing, and the day is full of work. I hope that in this letter, although it is short, you will find a meaningful grain, as is fitting for words of Torah, that any time one turns to it, he will benefit from it. I will conclude with a New Year's blessing. May your final judgment be for the good. Much peace to you and your assistance, and may all your wishes be fulfilled. Your beloved friend who who wholeheartedly awaits your honour and success, and blesses you from the holy mountains. Humbly yours, Avraham Yitzchak HaKohen Cook, Igrot 93.